how's life changed for you since uh, Big Ten Championship game? Has, has things changed much, though? Um, as far as on the field or off the field? Off. I mean, off the field, yeah. Phone <laughs> rings a little more. But, um, you know, I still got my uh, people in my corner, the important ones, and, and that's all the thing that matters. Who are the people in your corner? Who are the, the most important people in your life that are sort of sharing this moment with you? I would say my brothers and sisters, uh, Coach Ginn and the Glenville community, and my mom. And how have they, I mean, what's, obviously this is great for you, how have your friends and family been? I'm pretty good, pretty supportive about the whole situation. Just keep telling me, you know, keep going, it's not over. They knew I can do it, things like that, just being supportive. Can you compare your skill set to the one of uh, JT Barrett and Braxton? Um, we all are unique in our own ways, you know. Um, <clears throat> Braxton's on a whole different level. JT's on a whole different level, and I'm just, you know, myself. I mean, I don't think we have a lot of things in common, but <clears throat> a lot of things don't, you know, separate us as well. As a competitor, I would think that if you have a good performance in this national semifinal, that might give you a, an edge here going next, going into next season. Is that something that's you have to be thinking about at some point? I mean, at some point, but this is not the point because next season is so far away. And then we're trying to do something that's bigger than um, all of us, period. So I'm not really thinking about that. Yeah. Kurt, do you ever take time in, in, recently to kind of maybe pinch yourself that this is really happening? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, Braxton was going to be the guy. JT was the guy. Now you're leading the team into the national semifinals and stuff. I mean, is it has it been a whirlwind? How would you describe what it's been like mentally for you? Definitely unreal because, like I tell my coach, like I was telling him that leading up to the game and after the game, I mean, it just seems so unreal, you know, because – Looking back at the beginning of the season, we wasn't even supposed to be in that situation. You know, mm -hmm. losing um, our quarterback, then not having Jeff Hireman in the rotation for the first couple of games, mm -hmm. and then losing another quarterback day before, I mean, a game before the Big Ten Championship game. So it's definitely, like, it's not real. So what are, you, what are you telling yourself to keep yourself grounded, I guess, you know, as you go about this task right now? I mean, this getting ready to play Alabama, you know, but I mean, but knowing how well you played in that Big Ten Championship game, what are you doing to keep yourself on the ground, so to speak. Basically, knowing it's not over, you know, and it's not how well I play in the game, it's how well we played as a team and how the um, offense came together, how the defense came together in kicking games. So just basically let myself know it's not over because, mm -hmm. I mean, Big Ten Championship, that's that's one of our goals around here, but um, we chase the national championship. You, know, so. you only had like five days to get ready for that game. Did you, any part of that, your performance surprise you? Um, no, uh, you're wrong about that. I've been getting ready for that game uh, ever since I've been here. You know, that's how we uh, practice around here. You know, you always got to be ready. And it's, it's not like when I was a number two or number three, I wasn't getting that many. I mean, I, of course, I wasn't getting that many reps, but the mental reps are as important as the physical reps. So how do you use this time since you have so much more time to prepare for a team like Alabama, the number one team in the country? How do you use that right just making sure we prepare the right way. Just keep preparing, keep preparing, keep preparing, and just know that, just have confidence in each other and confidence in the game plan. Can you evaluate Alabama's defense? Um, not yet, but of course they're, they're a great team, not just the defense. You know, they're not number one for no reason, and Alabama's, they're gonna always have a good defense and always gonna have a good team. So right now I have to say physical. Kurt, oh, was there ever a point where you thought maybe this wasn't gonna work out here? After the tweet, after things came down, that maybe you thought, hey, maybe I need a fresh start. I mean, yeah, but the coaches gave me that fresh start, you know? I mean, I never really thought about going somewhere else or having a fresh start somewhere else. Um, the coaches basically know I need to, basically tell me I need to get my act together and um, mature off the field before I can be the starting quarterback here. Urban hey, speak about a 180. Is that what you feel like you've done since you've been here? Definitely, definitely. You said you're not all the way there, that you've had one of like the greatest turnarounds from being a mature uh, guy. What, what what do you think you need to be to be 100% mature? Um, I don't know, but like he said, he explained it perfectly. She said um, a 180, not a complete 360. So it's still a work in progress. So, I mean, just keep You don't want to get that 360. You'll be right back in season. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. right. No, 150, but, you want 180. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't even explain the tweet. You've been asking about it, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, it was just something that I did. I was just young and Im very immature at that time. But of course, I didn't feel that way about academics. And of course, no one in this program feels that way about academics. But I mean, it's just something that's in the past. And we got over as a as a team. And um, kind of still dealing with it on social media. But you know, it's in the past.